evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mahoning Drive-In Theater, the largest single-screen drive-in in the United States. We're certainly glad you could be with us this evening. And don't forget the concession stand is open with all kinds of great things to eat and drink. Welcome to Mahoning Drive-In Radio. We are here this week with Becca, one of our newer staff members, and we're just going to chit-chat a little bit about how she came to the Mahoning and her life and her hopes and dreams and where she keeps her car keys. Becca, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm great, Mark. How are you? So tell me about how you came into the Mahoning family, as it were. So it started back in June, <laughs> and I needed a job. June and, uh, 2020. Yep, June 2020. So... It's obviously during the COVID pandemic and I was like thinking, and now I live locally around the Mahoning Drive-In. So I already knew and was accustomed to the place. And I was like, well, a drive-in's gonna be doing great during COVID. It's a very nice socially distanced place. So I figured I should probably go help out my old drive-in. And I messaged them on Facebook and here I am. So you, you went to the Mahoning as an attendee earlier in your life, right? Yeah, um, before everyone went retro, uh, I used to go there with my family a lot, like a lot. Like that was like the go-to, we need something to do tonight. So we're going to the drive-in, we'll see what's playing. But yeah, so I used to go there all the time when I was younger and I vaguely remember like how it was set up. So then when I came back to the drive-in and then seeing it all, I was like an adult and I was like, wow, I remember the little banister by the by the, the food line being so much bigger. and But I remember like the popcorn machine and all of that. So it was fun, it was cute, it was exciting. And it's interesting to me because I didn't come to the Mahoning and the first time I went to the Mahoning was the, the last night of the f last non-retro season. So that was like 2014 or 15. Um, so yeah. I don't know what it was like before that. I mean, how, from your memories, your childhood memories, how different is, aside from what we show and the the wonderful weirdness we brought to it, I mean, how well attended were the movies? Uh, what was the experience like back then versus now for someone? Well, I do remember it getting packed. I remember that we, we just like now, when we have our busy days, you would have to get there early if you want to get a good spot. And um, I remember we would have like, I have a big family. So if we were doing like a big family night, we would all be there early trying to get good spots that were all by each other and all that. But yeah, I remember it getting packed. And I remember it being similar to what it's like what it's like now um you know everyone just kind of gets in there and then once you're there you're walking around you're just hanging out and just enjoying being around other people so yeah it's basically it's similar but since i'm older it's like wow people do this and people do that like that's crazy so but yeah it, it was it was nice when i was younger too how long ago do you think it was that you last visited before you worked there it was before we went retro. So I had to be 20, 2012, 2011, probably. I remember seeing Cats versus Dogs, and that's the last memory I have there. But I don't know if that was the last time I was there. But yeah, so <laughs> it was a while ago. The Mahoning, a little bird named Becca told me, was your first job, right? Yeah, that's my first job. So I was extremely surprised when I got, <laughs> when I got let in. So it's ruined you forever. Oh my gosh. I, <laughs> it has made a dent on me. If you can't tell in the background, I have so much Mahoning just merch. <laughs> like it's crazy how my first job ended up being more than just a first job. And I'm glad that it was. I'm so glad that it was. So what, so you're still in school currently. Yeah, I'm a senior. And in this world that we currently are living in, that means uh, you don't leave the house, right? Your school is, is, is it remote or is it, it's totally still remote? Well, you have, for my school, you have the choice of if you want to go in. And I was in person for three days, but my first day I got rear-ended coming home. And after that, I was like, I'm just going online. It's so much easier with the drive-in and just, it's not worth it right now. So yeah, I'm online. And that was something that was funny, you know, for anybody who hasn't been to the theater or, or doesn't recognize us, you know, I always say, you know, part of the idea behind this podcast and what we're doing right now is for people to get to know the person behind the face they see at the drive in. But over the last year with with COVID and the pandemic, it's really getting to know the set of eyes above the mask that you see <laughs> at the drive in. 
Uh, and, and you and I usually are sitting at the, uh, for the most of the season, we were sitting at the snack bar entryway where people would place their orders and pay. And we would chit chat between customers on a slower nights. And you mentioned to me that you hadn't yet had your driver's license or you didn't have your official driver's license yet. And you had the type of driver's license that you you, you couldn't be driving after dark. <laughs> and yeah. you told me that early this season. And I'm like, well, that might be a problem because oh, there's yeah. going to be many nights you're getting home you know, before dark. But you, that worked out OK. And you're, you're street yep, legal I, now, right? Yeah, I turned 18 and that law, the Cinderella law went away. But it is funny, though, because I will look at my license. It'll say under 18 until October 30th, under 21 until October 30th, whatever year. And it's like, wow, I literally have like a child's like a child's driver's license. <laughs> but yeah. So would you consider yourself a movie fan, per se, or somebody who is a casual fan? Because at the theater, we cater most of the time to really serious movie fans. And we get a lot of very devoted people coming out. And where on the on the spectrum would you say you fall? Well, I, I would say I'm more casual. I'm definitely not as like into it as I've seen at the drive-in, but I developed a bigger love for movies and became more involved with movies thanks to the drive-in. So I know so much more and I know more actors and just stuff like that. But yeah, I'm more of a casual person. Like I won't go out of my way to go to like a big movie festival across the country. <laughs> We've had discussions, as I, I tend to ask everybody, so what is your favorite film? You should know this one. The Back to the Future series, 100%. And you've been able to see these on a big screen. I know you were born too late to see them when they came out, obviously, but you've seen them at a theater somewhere over your, over the course of your life? Uh, I honestly can't remember. If I have, I, I mean, I know for sure if we play it at the drive-in, then yeah, but... But I don't think I've seen it on a big screen. I, I can, with great confidence, say you will have that opportunity at the Mahoning Drive-In Theater sooner or later. If I hear that it's confirmed, I'll let you know privately just so you can start, you know. Okay, thank you. Waxing the hoverboard or whatever. <laughs> so do you have any fond memories from the first season that you can legally talk about from the first season of working at the Mahoning? What were any highlights or, or or things that stick out from that first year of, of working the stand? My first story that comes to my head, like as soon as you said that, was when it was a Sunday and we were showing fire in the sky. But I didn't I didn't really know. I wasn't really paying attention. I wasn't supposed to work that night, but Max wanted me to cover his shift. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure, why not? I'll cover your shift. And uh, I show up there and all of a sudden I find out that Travis Walton is going to be there. <laughs> and I thought it was just gonna be another Sunday, but then all of a sudden there he was. <laughs> and I thought that was really cool. And I was just able to ask this guy questions and I, I had no idea what was going on until I was there. Oh, or um, when I met Ari Lehman, that, that was great. That was so fun. Cause that was another one where I had no idea what was going on. I knew we were preparing for Camp Blood Weekend. I think that was a Thursday that I, that I first saw Ari. And um, it was just like crazy, like what, like what's going on? So I really enjoyed those like pleasant little surprises that would just come out of nowhere. And I would just be like, wow, these people are just here and I could talk to them. <laughs> that is a cool aspect of what we do is, I mean, if you're a fan of what we're doing that weekend, you're on the inside and you can hang out with these people who come or, or you know, see the movies or see the setup before everybody else does. And then other times it's, it's sort of a learning experience. Like you might not know who these people are, but by the end of that weekend, you tend to have an appreciation for them or you see how much of an appreciation our audience has for them. And it's it's just kind of cool. And ultimately, yeah. maybe Bruce Campbell aside, because we, nobody could get close to him that weekend. It was just such a crazy, it was like, you know, it's the head of state was visiting. Other than that, we're generally just, they're just folks, you know, they're folks who are happy to be out and talk and they're, they've all been really cool. Oh, yeah. I would put Bruce Campbell aside for that. <laughs> that was a very crazy, crazy weekend. Yeah, we'd never experienced anything like that before. And uh, considering it was this gigantic event and none of us have done anything like that, I think it worked pretty well. The tsunami coming through. <laughs> that I, I was out on the lot at that point and it was just like, oh, it's going to rain a little. I'll just get wet. And then it was like, oh, my God, I need to get inside. 
Yeah, I remember when I did get my Bruce and my my picture with Bruce Campbell, that was after the downpour. So me, Max, and Crystal walk up to him. And the first thing he says to us, and I think the only thing he said to us was, wow, you guys look dry. And that was it. We took the picture and that was the end of it. It was, yeah, and I'd never done, I'd heard about those kind of, they called them love and shove or the, the the very, very fast photo ops like that. And it really, as soon as you realize you're standing in the right position, they're said, okay, <laughs> click. <laughs> it was really nice meeting you. Yeah, bye. So what do you do when you're not at the Mahoning? Like some, you might say, what is your day job or what, what do you like to do for fun? Who Who is the woman behind the mask? Well, for the most part, I've just been doing school. So once the once our season ended, it was like great. Because, well, I don't like the season ending, but I was like, okay, I have more time for school, and then more time to like see my friends and all that. Because once I was working, weekends was gone for me, and they were all weekday workers. So it was like this bashing of like schedules. Like I'm I'm on weekends. I'm not gonna be able to hang out during the weekend. So it was nice to finally like be around everyone again. So there are tales from various people who have worked at the Mahoning over the years that. The snack bar may be haunted. Have you had any experiences in the potentially haunted snack bar that you're willing to divulge at this moment? Um, I, you know what? Yeah, I, I will tell you this story. So it was one of the nights that me, Zoe, and Max and Crystal were staying at the at the drive-in. We were in the production booth, and we came out and went to the little coolers for uh, for a drink. And I noticed that one of the coolers was open. And that, I don't think any of us were really out there beforehand. Like, I don't think any of us were really back there. So that freaked me out. <laughs> I was uh, I was laughing so hard with Crystal. And I was trying to hop over the, hop over the, the counter. And I literally could not hop over the counter. And I felt legitimate fear in my body. And I was like, I'm stuck back here with the Mahoney drive-in ghosts. He opened the cooler and now he's not letting me leave. So that was probably my only like, little spooky experience, but I've never had anything really, really terrifying. We always make jokes though about how the founder or, you know, or the Mahoning drive and ghost story, they're there, but nothing, nothing truly terrifying has happened to me yet. It, it, it's, it's funny. The snack bar is like, it's, it's a, it's a place of business. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a place for the arts. But it's also kind of our clubhouse for everybody. You know, various people will stay over in the stack bar. I still do sometimes if, you know, I'm down there alone. And uh, it, it's like, it's it's the hangout. Oh my gosh, yeah. I never thought I would be able to just hang out at the concession stand. So like the nights that I would sleep over and we would go and get snacks and walk. It, it, just, it was just so cool to me because before that, I was used to that place as being a place of work. And now I was obviously like very comfortable at the drive-in. And I felt, it didn't feel like work all the time for me, but I just remember like staying at night. It was like so cool to walk outside and be like, oh, I'm in the concession stand. I remember the nights that I would stand at the door and it would be really cold or would I be running around in circles for hours and now I'm sleeping here. <laughs> so that's, I always thought that was super cool to me. The, the drive-in has a really cool, creepy, very still atmosphere if you're ever there at night on a night we're not open where there's maybe that one snack bar light on on the lot or there's no lights on out there. When I was coming previous seasons, I would come down on a Thursday night, sleep over and be there all weekend. And I would be there not totally alone. Usually two of the other guys were there, but sometimes I would get there before they came back from doing a grocery store run. And it was just, it was dead silent and just, you couldn't see what was in the darkness just beyond where the light fell. And it's a big lot. So, I can see where people would get creeped out. Oh yeah. Being there, you know, without a lot of other people. When it was like nighttime and we turned off all the lights out in the front room and we just were in the projection booth, door was closed, we were just staying in there. And then you would have to use the bathroom. Like I would I would be like, Crystal, you have to come with me. <laughs> Someone has to come with me because it is scary out there. But just for anybody who's listening, um, as far as we know, there have been no ghost related deaths on the lot at least since the current management has taken over. Hopefully it stays that way. Well, we'll see. 2021's a new year. <laughs> so 2021, the new season is going to be starting in April, as it always does. And you're coming back again to join the team. 
probably doing similar to what you did last season, but you never know. You never know when you're going to get <laughs> bumped up at the, the drive-in. Um, I was a cashier last season. Now I'm general manager. Who knows what, what things will happen by the time late October rolls around. Uh, any 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 words of wisdom or thoughts for anybody listening who, who will be seeing you on the lot this year? Well, um, if you see me and recognize me, don't be afraid to say hi. <laughs> I'm very approachable, I think. <laughs> so... Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for the new season. I'm really excited to be coming back. I never in a million years thought I would fall in love with the drive-in the way that I did. And I really do plan on staying here as long as I can. So I'm excited. I can't wait for us to open up again. Wonderful. I will be excitedly taking my position in the folding chair next to you at the door. Mask on face, ready to touch money. Well, I'd like to thank you, Becca, for joining us here on Mahoning Drive-In Radio. And we will see you at the drive-in. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for coming out tonight to the Mahoning Drive-In Theater. We hope you'll come back and see us again real soon. The exit is on the right-hand side of the screen at the front of the field, and most importantly, have a very safe trip home. Good night and God bless you. <laughs>